Well, Coach, I think today is a normal Wednesday for you guys. Uh, how the, how's the team looking this week? Beautiful day. Uh, kids were great. Michelle got after it. Uh, we were pleased. We haven't graded the video yet, but on the field it went real well. Jeff, USF plays at the fastest tempo in the country. How difficult of a challenge is that on a short week to prepare for? Um, obviously, anybody that gets that many snaps, there's some factors in there and some adjustments you got to make. So, yeah, it's they're really good at it. So, that'll, getting it duplicated in practice is really hard to do. But we have some turbo in our own offense. We don't do it to their extent. But uh, I think we're giving our guys a good scout team look. Hope so. Does uh, going up against Tennessee good? Like help that because they were pretty fast as well. Yeah, it, it helps all that kind of stuff. You know, Texas State goes fast; those guys go fast. Uh, we do at times, so uh, it's helpful. But you know, still the game's different, and they're averaging over eighty snaps a game. Then they had forty six snaps at halftime against Temple. And yeah, it was similar to North Texas in that game, and how high our snap count was, and uh, we suffered a little bit there uh, late in the game, so. We need to address some of those things. Is it similar play calls and things that you're going to have to scheme for just because of the connection the coaching staff had to Tennessee? What do you mean, their offense compared to Tennessee? Yeah, do you, do you see a lot of the same things as an easy, easier prep for the guys in some ways just because they're familiar with it, or is it different enough that it's... Yeah, it's hard? always different. I mean, there's no, there's never like a cookie cutter. There's always, there are humans involved. So, you know, Alex is putting his spin on it where at Tennessee and it's a little bit different span, but it's similar for sure. They're coming in five and five after recent years. They haven't been as good, but what stands out to you guys about how they've gotten to where they are this year? Well, their defensive roster is uh, it's a it's a good roster. Mm -hmm. You can tell they've gone out and done a really good job of bringing in some good players. Uh, offensively, the quarterback, you know, they struck gold there. The guy's really good. Uh, the slot receiver is really good. They found them couple outside guys making some plays. The running backs are really good. So, you know, you start doing all that, very similar when we got here. Uh -huh. and you, you get that culture, start getting changed. And Alex has done a good job getting those guys playing better. Jeff, I think we're talking to Terrell Haynes today, and you've told a couple times a story about the look on his face in your first meeting. How has your guys' relationship kind of developed over time? Yeah, that's just T. I mean, uh, he gave his speech to the team yesterday. We let all our seniors talk. And, he said he used to get mad when I called him an energy vampire, and uh, now he understands why he was called energy vampire. He gave a great story about a conversation with his grandfather that helped him come out of that phase of his life. So uh, he's, he's, he's just not like the most energetic, jovial human in the world. He's just a real chill, laid back, good dude, and uh, I don't have to get him going anymore. He, he knows when to get going. Jeff, what, what are those, I guess, speeches from the seniors, what do they do for the other guys on the team? Um, I think it's really good for those young guys because all those guys are older and they've been through with those guys in the back. Of, you know, scout team's hard. Yeah. Special teams only is hard. Not playing at all is hard. Being away from mom and dad first time, hard. And uh, they all let them know where we came from too, like where we started, uh, what the facility was like, and how spoiled they are now. And, you know, the, how we're, they're griping because we, we don't have a, an overhead or an indoor. And uh, those guys just wanted a locker uh, that smelled good and was clean. And uh, that just some perspective of what to teach young guys. It's senior night, Friday night. Have you thought about what that's going to be like to see the seniors one last time in the Alamo Dome? It's always tough. I'm, you know, I'm really close to those guys, uh -huh. as all of us are. And it's always an emotional night. It's a tough night. And uh, we've, we've talked about it, about how to make sure we're in the moment. And uh, But, yeah, it'll be a special night for those guys. Tremaine Bell is another guy we talked to yesterday. He seems like he's really taken advantage of the extra year of eligibility, come back bigger, and earned a pretty big spot in the rotation. How have you seen him sort of make the most of this opportunity that he's had? He has. And T's always been a wonderful human. He's just his body's gotten bigger and stronger, and he's made more plays because of it. He stays at it. He's a true the epitome of winning the day and stacking it every single day. And T's made the most of what he has, and he's one of the leaders of our defense and, and productive. It's been a couple of years now that we've been able to see whether it's fifth-year guys, sixth-year guys because of the COVID year. How have you seen that kind of change the college experience? You see it's been beneficial for a lot of those guys, or what do you make of that? I'm sure it's frustrating for the young guys because they've got to wait longer, but it's been beneficial in a lot of areas because you see a lot more mature football, better locker rooms, older people, grateful. You know, the, the 
23 year old version of all of us is probably than the 18 year old version of us was. And we're dealing with 23 and 24 year olds now where you would be having to deal with 18, 19 year olds that were already ready to play and they're having to wait a little longer. We're talking to a lot of guys who are closing in on master's degrees too, which is a pretty interesting development. I mean, academically, it seems like it's been positive for a lot of folks too. There's no doubt. Uh, all of our guys that have spoken so far already had their degrees and they're working on masters to your point. And, uh, you know, Kalechi spoke today, he's got cyber security. I mean, you know, it's some impressive degrees as well. Jeff, I think I heard you on the radio last week talking about a surgery for JT Clark. Did, did he have that and like, what's his status? He did and it went very well. And uh, he is in a way better mindset, spirit. This is, he's way better off than he was last year already. So uh, it's, it's got a significant, significant recovery. I would say 10 months at the minimum. Um, so, praying for him, rooting for him, encouraging him. Anytime you see him, he's got that beautiful smile. He's in every team meeting, he hadn't missed anything yet. Uh, it's unfortunate, but if anybody can come out of it, JT can. Is he going to come back to the Roadrunners next year? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. JT will be back. He's not going to, no, he's not going to leave us. Why was it that an extra surgery was required to just not heal the way you guys thought, or did it, was there some kind of re tear or re aggravation at some point? Yeah, that's one of those things you probably need to talk to the medical staff about. That's, Way above my pay grade, but yeah, I would say there must have been something that didn't go right if it required another one. Jeff, do you guys have to do anything extra this week, keeping the guys up with uh, senior day? And, and that's a day with a lot of emotions, could easily, you know, lead to some errors on the field. Is there anything extra you guys do? Just that. Yeah. I mean, you teach, you learn. I mean, I've been a head coach now 19 years. I've had 19 senior nights, and uh, inevitably, the emotion usually causes pre-snap stuff and some things that are unfortunate because you're not totally locked in. You gotta be where your feet are. You gotta live in the moment. And if they want to have an enjoyable night with their grandmother or their grandfather when the game's over, they better prep this week. They better be focused during the game. And then when the game's over, get you a bunch of pictures and cry and talk about how good you played. Well, it'd be a terrible night if you go out there and don't play well. And you haven't hang out with your grandparents all weekend. And that's sour. <laughs> Good. So Thank to you. elaborate on that, you did say the other day you have 21 seniors right now. Uh, how do you kind of maintain that focus during the last game and push through, just, especially just, on senior night? Yeah, just that. I mean, we, we bring it up. We talk about it a lot. You know, and a lot of those guys went through it last year because they weren't sure they were coming back or not. Yeah. Uh, so some of them have already practiced. I mean, some of them, <laughs> some of them have already cried, taking pictures, <laughs> went and played. Now they're going to cry, take pictures, do it again. <laughs> Jeff, have you kept in touch with Zachary Franklin at all this year? You kept any eye on what he's been doing over there? I've definitely kept an eye on him, but uh, you can't stay in touch with him just because of tampering. Uh, we, we, one time, uh, by text, love you and miss you, and I told him the same thing. But that was, that was a while ago. So, but yes, I keep up with him. And, you know, that's all I've done is keep up from a distance. With all the details kind of unclear, but he's played four games over there and would have the opportunity to do a red shirt, and a lot of people want to know, is there any possibility he could come back here? Have you guys considered that at all? There's no way I could touch that with a 10-foot goal <laughs> right now. He's, he's playing for Ole Miss right now, so there's no way, or whatever's going on, he's in Ole Miss, so there's no way I could comment on that. Without any slight or disrespect to him, is it a situation that you can use with the guys here who might be considering a transfer to say grass isn't always greener, that kind of thing? Um, your, your point is valid, but I would never, at the expense on media in any way, try to embarrass Zakari. So I'm, I'm not going to really just even touch that subject. It's always unfortunate when any child uh, tries to go do something and, and it doesn't turn out the way uh, he wants it to. You know? But I don't know the details, so I, I really don't know how to even comment other than what I just said. So, Coach, you said that you fired yourself from being OC back in 07. I really like that. Uh, all jokes aside, you clearly know that it takes more than one person to coach a team and more than one person to lead a team. So as one of the many leaders of the team, what is something that you've been working on this week that we might see in the Alamo Dome this Friday? Um, it's just the progression of what we've been doing the entire year. I mean, it's, it's just not complicated. We all try to make it rocket science, and it's not. You just it's corny, and I know y'all get tired of hearing it, but you got to stack days. You got to keep getting one percent better every single day. And our best football is still in front of us. We've not captured it yet. I still feel strongly that the way we played in the third quarter 
uh, Saturday night is a potential of doing that for four. We've yet to put four of those quarters together in a row, but it's still out there. We put three together, we put two together, we've been sporadic, but we haven't put four in a row together yet. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.